Hi there. I'm kicking off this week with uh, an exciting live. We're going to be talking about uh, a new uh, way of dealing or uh, managing retail and managing distribution channels. It's really important today to look at uh, the live as a completion of most of the subjects that I have been presenting uh, on Live with Ghalia. I mean, I've taken the time to look at uh, pop-up stores or alternative types of retailing, how they appear uh, within brands distribution channels or uh, on their own, how they've completed uh, other distribution channels uh, or uh, supported uh, communications channels. Um, in today's shaky retail environment, brands are rethinking their strategies. They are rethinking the ways they want to do business and uh, they are certainly looking at how to make the most out of uh, the customer's shopping experience as this is the only thing that matters today. So how did retail come uh, to be so customer centric? What happened along the way? And why are we talking today about unified commerce? I mean, what is unified commerce and how uh, management is uh, thinking today in terms of managing different uh, retail channels or distribution channels? But I think that um, Tavi will be able to demystify everything related to uh, unified commerce today. So I'm going to invite Tavi in and he's going to take the time to introduce you to himself, what he does and uh, the nature of his work at Proximis. And he's going to be explaining all the details related to unified commerce. Let me invite Tavi in to kick off with this beautiful... I'll wait one second and I think we'll be connected. Hi, Tavi. <laughs> Hi, Gharia. How is it going today? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. I don't know if you have heard the little introduction that I've done. <laughs> it was perfect, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tavi. But I didn't talk about you nor about your experiences because I directly kick off my conversation by leaving the floor to you uh, and to, uh, to tell us exactly what you do and about your experiences. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, Aradia, to invite me to this live show. Um, it's very exciting. And uh, hi to everyone who joined that uh, live chat uh, on Instagram. Uh, my name is Tavi, uh, Tavi Kamten. I'm in charge of the partnership at Proximis. Proximis is a SaaS platform technology for uh, providing unified commerce to retailers. That's the main topic. So we will go deeper, of course, about that. My background is um, I came and I went through different industry. I was working in the banking industry, technology industry, retail industry, supply chain industry. So I think that I have now better overview of what the, a retailer, a company requires, especially this COVID world that we are living in. And um, that's, uh, that's a good point for me to, to be here and to explain more about what retail have to face uh, in the new world. Um, so that's why uh, you invite me today. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, I mean, it's always really important to look at um, the changes that are happening, but uh, as well at how brands and retailers are responding to that change. Uh, of course, the pandemic last year um, highlighted many uh, maybe deficiencies in the retail system. Um, but the pandemic is only one thing that really uh, showed that retail, the, the retail environment had been slowly changing uh, for the past decade. So what are the other factors that caused uh, retail to change and the retail environment uh, to, to, to be so different? I think that uh, since we know that we, we are in, on the earth, uh, we always exchange things by exchanging product, by selling things. Um, and the way that we, we, we sell um, product items to the consumers is changing 
continually uh, is evolving um, every time. We start with selling product in store, then we start to sell over the phone, then we had publishing some advertisement, um, then we we sell on TV, then e-commerce come. I mean, uh, the, the, the consumer always evolve with the environment and technology um, provide to him to get in touch with a brand or retailers. So I do think that uh, currently um, the, the, the change has started uh, more deeper um, with the e-commerce. E-commerce became a real channel. Uh, we should say during uh, 2020 and um, uh, the 2000, sorry, um, be between 2000 and 2010, e-commerce started to become a sales channel. And because it became a sales channel, retailers, brand, they start to have one new silo in the organization. They start to build a department to manage e-commerce, to touch the consumer by providing um, product sell over the internet. So what we're facing during the last decade, it was the history of the organization having one side e-commerce silos. In the other hand, historical retail channel, brick and mortar footprint that everybody knows. And during years and years, because retailers um, turnover it, it, it was still about 80% of the turnover for retailers, comparing to 15, 20% online, we were just considering the e-commerce of one other way to sell, but not a main way and to sell. Green. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So when it started to become more and more obvious that e-commerce become a bigger channel, 10 years ago, we start to talk about omni-channel. Right. What does it mean? We, we try for almost 10 years to connect those two silos that I was talking about, to create bridge in between, to try to get information from the customer coming from one channel to another. But it was still building on something built with two silos. So and and so hard. and so this is uh, uh, Tavi. I believe that this word that we were stressing about for the past couple of years, like providing customers with a frictionless and seamless experience, was really like filling these little gaps between the online and the offline uh, channels that you are that you are talking about. Yeah, that, that, that's right. That that was the aim and the target of new channel. But we omnichannel is focusing on channel. What does it mean? They, they're focusing on the way the retailers are organized for the last 20 years, right. not the way that the consumer now behave because they have more selling touch point. And I do think that the more advanced companies what uh, companies like Alibaba in China, why are we always talking about China? Because they were jumping from nothing to total integrated channels, you know? Right, so right. they started to think about having e-commerce straight from the beginning. And Jack Ma from Alibaba always say that at the new retail, um, comparing to probably um, Occidental retail, is uh, unifying online, offline, supply chain and data all together in the same platform to provide a consumer seamless experience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So... So what we're calling unified commerce that we are the topic of today is to provide this kind of stack to put back the consumer in the center of the strategy of retailers. So we know that we have more and more everyday new channels coming in. We were talking about live shopping. We were talking about pop-up store, which is one way to sell uh, in the old organization, you know, provide a touch point with a customer, we were talking about uh, Instagram shopping that we, we we're using today, um, Facebook shopping, live shopping, uh, social commerce sh shopping, uh, chatbot shopping. There's so many ways now to touch the consumer. So it's even harder for retailers to understand how a consumer will buy today and will buy tomorrow. Hmm. Even myself, you know, if I'm looking for a pair of shoes, 
uh, the first time I want to buy from a brand, uh, I'm probably not buying online because I'm not sure that it's going to fit my, my foot currently because it's going to be the first time. So I just want to make sure how size is exactly this brand, uh, what is the fabric they're using, is that the great quality? So I would probably do like 81% of the people uh, around here looking for uh, making my consumer journey online first. So searching online a product and then put it in the basket, mm -hmm. abandon the basket just to make it as a wish list and then go to the store because I really want to try to make sure that before I'm buying that pair of shoes, it's going to fit me. Right. But where the first experience uh, is a success, the next one I would say, okay, I know the size I'm, I'm, uh, I'm having for, my, on, for, for this brand. So next time I can buy online, I'm mm -hmm. confident to buy online. Yeah. So the same client life cycle is very different from one purchase to another. So it's even harder now for a retailer to say, okay, Tavi, he's always going to buy on e-commerce. It's not true. Right. right. And tomorrow, so, maybe I'm, I will I'm, get, laughing. Yeah. I'm laughing when you explain it because I think that this is the ultimate nightmare for the retailer. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> because, because retailers have been always trained uh, to predict consumer behavior right yeah. and to always like categorize consumers like these are the early adopters these are the innovators these are that 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 and then suddenly uh, we are facing as we as you say it with consumers who are completely <laughs> volatile and who might behave very differently with different brands and depending on their level of relationship with that brand, whether it's a first timer or not, whether they had a positive or negative experience with it or not, right? That's right. And I see the question here about um, considering online purchase like a compulsive uh, purchase. Uh, I think it's both true. I yeah. mean, when you go shopping in the um, retail shop, you sometimes go in there and see, wow, that pair of shoes is so nice. I will buy it. And mm -hmm. it's not always plain to buy something in the store. Sometimes you just go as hanging out in the store and you, you buy. So I, I think that he, you're right. Internet is pushing a more consumer to, to buy um, like uh, not plain ways, uh, but it's also true for a footprint store. Right. And which also um, uh, leads us to uh, the, the second idea that today uh, every channel that the brand presents has to have a certain uniqueness. Right, Tavi? Uh, do, do, we're looking at more and more stores that are like concept stores or lifestyle stores or experiential stores. We're using those terms because we want customers to have a reason to come to retail. And throughout their journey, we want to also provide them with a lot of information or reassurance for them to go back online or whatever they want to and complete um, their tasks or uh, they're buying a trip. So how about this? What do you feel that, or what do you think uh, that the retail channels are uh, developing or in which direction are they going? Uh, you, you, I think you're right. And it's not Philippa, only, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. We seeing the, Lydia said that um, people are looking for experience. That's totally true. I mean, if you look at Nike, we always ask, use Nike as an example, what they decided, uh, what Apple have decided. They said yeah. that they want to control the experience of the consumer, which is online and offline. Whatever the consumer go, they want to offer the best experience. Why people go online? Because they can find easily the thing, uh, items, and they have some services. So why should they go offline? They should go offline also because they have something different than the, what they can't have actually on the website. So experience, more advices, speaking with a, probably an associate, finding something that you can't feel digitally. Mm -hmm. So, and um, you know, um, I was talking with uh, luxury companies and they, they said as well, um, we are not going online except if we can provide a good content, a good experience to our customer especially in luxury industry, uh, people are looking to be 
has privilege to be to come to the store to buy expensive bag or expensive shoes or whatever mm -hmm. what should they go to buy online if they are not considering as different online so the content and the experience that you mentioned previously is exactly probably what they're going to uh, push retailers uh, to transform to change the way they will welcome customer into their store okay and um Looking at this concept today, do brands have a pressure to exist uh, in different retail outlets and retail channels? I mean, to provide customers with this uh, unified experience, that, is it like a rule of thumb today that a brand has an online e-commerce site, uh, a physical store, uh, or other types of uh, alternative retail outlets such as pop-ups and so on? Yeah, I, I do think that the more touch point you have with your customer, mm -hmm. uh, the wider is the net to capture the the sales, uh, the better it is, you, the more resilient you are. And we are experiencing, I think the pandemic just accelerate this uh, new behavior. Um, we all know that it started years before pandemic. Pandemic is, it was just an accelerator for, for that, right? Um, mm -hmm. Of course, and... Um, Someone, the, 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 the ex-chairman of uh, Prada told me last, uh, last week something very interesting. You know that 3 to 5% of the consumer population go out of the market every year. And every year, 3 to 5 new consumer is coming into the market. The young people who are natively, they were born with all that technology. Digit, yes. Exactly. That digital way to be in contact with a brand, to see the content, to follow a key opinion leader, influencer, bloggers. So if you're not providing the right content to, to the expectation of that generation, you're going to lose every year three or four or five percent of your market share mm -hmm. because they will go to your competitor who are offering exactly the way they, they want to consume, they want to buy things, to be in touch, to be involved with the brand. So that's important. I think that that's a good, I mean, good idea about saying, okay, 5% is going out, 5% is going in. Are you ready to welcome the new 5%? If right. you're still doing the old fashioned retail, are you able to capture that new consumers who just joined the market? Right. It's very interesting, true. And uh, Lilia, thank you for your comment. I mean, I think you're still talking about the luxury consumer and how important he wants to feel uh, and how engaged he wants, to feel, <laughs> he wants to feel as well. And I'm keen to ask you, um, Tavi, today, since we now understand that uh, luxury brands and other retail brands like, like at Mastige or ready to wear levels do exist and differences in retail and retail presentation exists as well. It means that under the context of unified commerce, every brand will be able to use any channels that they see as fit. However, they have to multiply these, these touch points in the best way to keep meeting with their consumers. So this is the essence of this conversation today. Let's like demystify this idea of unified commerce and its importance. So just by uh, presenting unified commerce is any brand at any level, whether luxury or mass, uh, going to uh, be needing <laughs> to work with unified concepts. Yeah, that, that's true. We, we at Proximis, we have like um, more than 50 customers um, belong, or they belong to, from different industry, um, delicatessen, sport industry, um, fashion industry, uh, do-it-yourself industry. So what does it mean? What do you see or portfolio of customer? Unified commerce is not um, dedicated to one industry. It's dedicated to fulfill customer expectation. That's the key point. So as you said, you, as any retailer, any brand, need to be able to add new channel to their system to be able to fulfill that expectation. 
So why do we demystify um, today unified commerce? Unified commerce is, first of all, my point of view, a new strategy. Before, like we're providing a unified commerce platform, it's before that. It, we have in TV Jeff de Bruges. Jeff de Bruges is a chocolate store in France. They have like 400 uh, franchise stores, 100 uh, um, um, integrated store. So 500 store all around France. Mm -hmm. And they have also outside of France, but let's say about France currently. The, 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 the CEO of Jeff de Bruges, he said that the transformation has started with human because you have to uh, change the mindset of your team, the manager, uh, the people who are facing the customer in store, the people who are managing e-commerce as well. Uh, why? Because before, as I said, every organization was built in silos. Mm. Today, we have to do like horizontal way to integrate all team into the same topic, the same target to have provide to the customer a seamless experience whenever you start your online shopping and finish offline or start offline and want to finish online you know you how many times you go to the store and say oh, okay it's good it's good stuff but um, i'm not sure i'm gonna buy i'm gonna think about that and you you may be able to finish it online right right so jeb Bruch said that you have to change your mindset and stop uh, putting in competition in your own organization, the retail department against the e-commerce department oh, yeah. against yeah. the content department, yeah. because all have to satisfy the same customer. And the yeah. customer is not saying in the morning when he's waking up, I'm going to buy online today only. So I'm, a, I'm the online customer. Uh, yeah. uh, and tomorrow, <laughs> no, 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 I'm working today. I'm the in-store customer only. So you... Uh, director of retail, you're going to be my provider. That's not mm -hmm. true. Today, mm -hmm. we are just, as a consumer, we want to buy things. We, we were talking about the triple A. I want to buy anything, anytime, anywhere. Anywhere, yeah. Exactly. And if you're not spoiling me that way, I'm going to go to your competitor who offering me that experience, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, to reply to you, first of all, we do think that CEO, uh, top manager of this kind of organization have to think about how do I change my own company to face the new behavior of consumer? How do I satisfy my consumer all together? Retailers, online, franchise, uh, you know, we work in this, as the same brand. When I'm going to Jeff de Bruges, I don't know if the owner of the store is a franchise or an integrate store right i just want to buy a box chocolate. of chocolate exactly yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> so the way you organize behind the curtains is not my business i just want right. to be satisfied yeah so you as an organization you have to be able to provide me that satisfaction yeah. otherwise i would go to your competitor right Right. Uh, Lilia, I'm going to answer you. Uh, just stay tuned till the end because uh, Tavi has a little surprise for you all about <laughs> the case study. <laughs> so just bear with us a little bit. And we had earlier, Tavi, a little question. I mean, about uh, translating the experience online. Uh, I think we, we covered that uh, about like uh, the homogeneous experience between online and offline. So now when you presented this, um, this example of Chef de Bruges, it is clearly putting the customer at first and letting, uh, letting him uh, lead us as brands into recreating or reinventing our system to meet with or her needs which is a different way of doing business, right? And right. sometimes it's scary because the brand or the brand manager uh, would feel sometimes out of control or as if he doesn't have a say in what his brand has to provide. What can you comment on this idea? Uh, yeah, I, I do think that, that that's why this is the whole company strategy because you have to provide, as you said, and the question was, how can we provide the same experience both online and offline. Currently, you have to at least be able to provide the same catalog size, 
you know, I, I see quite often that, okay, that product is only available online, online. because it, yeah, because it comes from the warehouse. Yeah. But what do I, but I saw it in the store last, last day, you know, why can't I buy it uh, in the store? Uh, online from the product that I saw in a store. This is because the online and the offline are not connected. So you have to be able to provide the same um, range of catalog online and offline. If I'm online, I can buy some product coming from the warehouse, but also mix like Amazon have done a product coming from another vendor, another franchise, another store, you know, but the, the chains that the retailer have currently, they have a chain of store that Amazon doesn't have. Doesn't have, yeah. Exactly. They have that, that asset that Amazon doesn't have yet because they're opening stores now, right? And if they're investing in the store, it's because it's making money. <laughs> it's not just because they like the to glory. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. No, that's right. So, the, so what does it mean? If you take advantage of your network, of your store chains um, of your associate in store and all the store become a small warehouse you're gonna load down also the cost of your inventory mm -hmm. why because the same pullover for example or the same shirt can be stored in different location but even I'm, I'm online currently and i want this this shirt black shirt in in m size for example the system, the brand should tell me, okay, I have 10 left in warehouse. I have two left in Paris. I have three left in London. Where do you want to buy it? If you want to buy it in Paris, you can have it in two hours if you like, because I know that it's available in store. So the associate can get your order ready in two hours or one hour, instead yeah. of waiting that it's going to be shipped from the warehouse in 24, 48, three days or four days, you can satisfy your customer by offering a better experience. We're talking about experience of delivery mode. And Amazon has pushed that very hard. When mm -hmm. they said they can deliver in the same day, uh, yeah, even the same day now, what, how do you want to compete that? You can compete, especially if you have a store. And yeah. we know that now sustainable purchase mindset is also to not using always shipping from very far to your house. Yeah, to calculate the, the carbon footprint that is more... Exactly. Uh, yeah, respective. Yeah, exactly. So why not? If you can get it into the store, you save money of shipping, mm -hmm. you save the planet of carbon, mm -hmm. and you can get your product quicker right. than waiting for the... You know, and to be able to provide this information, you have to mm -hmm. connect your store as a point of sales, but also as inventory location mm -hmm. uh, to your system to say to your customer, I have that product somewhere in my network. Right. Do you want me to provide it quicker because I have it close to your home, thanks to the store location? If it's possible, then I can offer that service to you. Right. And what we've seen last year, in 2020, comparing to 2019, all consumer from our customer, so retailers and brand, start from 13% using uh, click and collect to 70% using cl mm. click and collect. Mm. This is not only because of pandemic, because you know that because of the lockdown, a lot of store was closed. It just means that when you're offering the right service to your customer, your consumer, the consumer will use it. Right. That's, is that correct? Yes, yes. And it's facilitating. I mean, it's not, uh, it's providing the, the ultimate facility in the most convenient way. And I think the purchase become blended as part of uh, the consumer's daily habit. I mean, just I'm walking out of uh, my work today. I'm passing through that street. I know that the store is there. I can just like pick up what I've ordered and go home. So, so we, we can come to think today that any, any point that the brand uh, presents, whether online, offline, or any other type of warehouse uh, is 
an integral part on its own. And all of these are connected with one hub, which unifies uh, or expands the brand's catalog. I think that this is like at the heart of the Proximist uh, service, right? That's correct. So if we come now to the solution, we, we understand uh, why should we, um, or why a retailer should move to unified commerce because consumer behavior has changed and because of new technology, a new way to be touched as consumer has evolved and has been multiplied also because of the retailers, because retailers have multiplied also a uh, new touch point. So right. that, that, that also the reason why there's many ways now to purchase. So if we follow the, why should we move to unified commerce? If you understand that and why the CEO had to change the mindset of the, 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 the company and organization, we as proximies, how, we have the how to do that. Yeah. And the how to do that is a simple platform. We are not talking about years of implementation of projects and rollout. We are talking about five months. In five months, you can switch to silos, e-commerce, retail footprint, uh, content and everything to only one solution for mm. all mm. and we are not aiming to say the other solution are not good we're just saying that if you want during the pandemic having a quick win solution to provide the best experience for your consumer for you to sell more and better better margin better experience uh, better footprint better uh, carbon away as well if you want to do that quickly you can just ask us customer. We were talking about example, another example, Monceau Fleur. Monceau Fleur is a flower store chain based only on franchise, oh, yeah. you know? They were struggling during two years to try to do a project of unified commerce by adding different solutions, two years doing that. And they're ending with nothing. And in January, 2020, they said, okay, they heard about Proximus. They, Proximus is only unified commerce topic. We know we are not doing ERP. We're not doing CRM. We're not doing WMS. Our only aim is to provide the best unified commerce platform. And they signed with us in January because they say we, we miss two years of uh, Mother Day. And Mother Day for flowers industry is it's the like biggest day. Biggest you know? day. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you can't miss a third time. Yeah. So. So they signed with us in January and we delivered the, the platform in April to be ready in, in May for test, in June for Mother Day. And they sell all the inventory because they based the inventory on the last year. Mm -hmm. One week before the Mother Day, they, they sold out yeah. because they provide the right experience for the consumer, the right services. And now they are the new Uber delivery for flowers, you know, oh, wow. this is exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, try to add the technology, not just to have a technology, but to be resilient, to be adaptable to what is going to be the future, which, which you don't know. Um, two or three years ago, we never heard about live shopping that we heard today. Yeah. Right. You know, now in China, 14% of the sale, total sale, have been done with live shopping. It's crazy, right? New channel, and in one year, it become now 14% of your turnover in your industry. Mm -hmm. So if you and, had- And we're talking, we're talking about something that existed and is there. I mean, we didn't reinvent the wheel. However, we're just seeing how those tools fit in our uh, brand daily and how they help our brand uh, develop. And, and yeah, thinking about it, it's crazy. And how simple it could be. Uh, and if the brand is already in the mindset, as you, as you explained it, uh, to what extent it could like yield all the positivity of, of these uh, channels, right? That's right. <laughs> um, moreover, if we want to uh, like uh, process this idea of unified commerce further, uh, we highlighted on this, the concept of resilience. It means that every brand would apply uh, the unified commerce in his uh, own words, right? Uh, so the brands are also invited not to be afraid to conform at each time into models that are copied or built 
like mm. the competition, right? So how can you comment about that? Yeah, I, 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 there's different, different ways to answer. Um, I think that the tools can be the same. We have like more than 60 customers currently and you're using the same tool, the same back office. Mm. But what makes a difference, as you say, to be different to other competitors is gonna be the content. Right. And you know, um, what we provide is innovative as a SaaS platform, but many brands have done this in-house already. If mm. we think about Walmart, if you think about Target, if you think about um, Tencent, Alibaba, Amazon, they were thinking about already unifying channels to provide a seamless experience. What we're providing here is the out-of-the-box ready platform for middle market to say, okay, I don't have the time, the, the team, the staff, and the money as Canadian Tire, for example, have, or Best Buy have, but I want to provide the same experience to my customer. Mm -hmm. So using Proximus is using that accelerator as technology. Mm -hmm. And then I can focus my team on making the difference about the content. We know that we're going, you, you, if you see about Nike, they took off from Foot Locker, all their brand. You can't buy now a Nike at Foot Locker because they decided they want to control that. They took, took off from Amazon as well. But because they want to provide a nice experience into their store, they want to control their image. Let's Talk about camp, camp in, in New York, you know, the toy store. You know, one way you have uh, Toys R Us, they are collapsed uh, many years ago. Mm -hmm. They almost disappear from the market. And you see camp, uh, a, a, a chain store of toys as well, who increasing his sale. What are the difference in between? In the camp store, if you go to New York, you will see that behind the wall, you have a, a Disney World and children, parents can go behind the store to a kind of theme park and you can try many toys as you wish, you know? Mm -hmm. And what happened? They provide an experience for children. They provide mm -hmm. an experience for parents. When the children have tried the toy, what do you think they is going to happen? Buy. Exactly. You, 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 I want to buy it as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I saw that in New York, you know, they're using... Uh, a scooter in, inside, they're playing the puzzle, they're using the puppies and everything. So when they go up from that, of course, they're the cashier <laughs> at the exit yeah. point. Yeah. Because yeah. the children say, oh, I love it. I tried it for 30 minutes, an hour, two hours. You can stay as, as long as, as you long want. As long as you want. Yeah. Exactly. And what parents can do against that. So they provide experience to be different than Toys R Us. Mm. And they mm. win. Mm, mm, mm. So the content would be the difference. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's really interesting to, to think about that and to see how different types of brands and different industries, we've talked about Dr. Bruges, like chocolate, and we've talked <laughs> about a, a brand that sells toys and different customers, like kids and their parents or people who are willing to buy chocolate or flowers, which is really interesting because uh, all of these brands would, at a certain point, need this types of solution uh, to put forward or to create more value to their customers. Um, now you have worked with different brands and different retailers. I mean, just like thinking about the 60 brands that mm. have been integrated into the company is um, an important uh, experience, right? Um, how, can you, how can you tell us I mean, if we are brand managers, uh, what advice can you give us if we're still hesitating about the idea of unified commerce and its importance? Yeah, do not hesitate anymore. You, you, you don't have the time to hesitate and the technology is mature enough and you're not going to be the first one. Don't be the last one to use it, right. you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, and because now the life cycle of the technology, the acceleration of the changes of consumer is much faster than the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. Every new technology, as I, as I explained for the live shopping, it took only one year in China to have a share market of 14% for new technology. If you don't have the technology to add new channel easily and you have to build 
within one or two years to add this new channel, you, you, you're gonna l l lose the race. Lose, yeah, yeah. You know, and that that the thing also you 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 don't have the time now to be perfect with a four years project. You mm -hmm. have to run MVP to be able to okay. Uh, we start with something and we 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 improve that platform. We improve that content. But let's start with something to satisfy the customer. Let's say about TikTok. TikTok, you know, it's coming from China and and now it's, it's covering the world. And they decided to have TikTok shopping, okay? Yeah. TikTok shopping, they're targeting like Instagram, same kind of company, same kind of social media, targeting between uh, young people between 16 and 25. Okay, if you are a brand and your staff and your product is dedicated to young people, do you think that you're uh, going to be able to reach that people, that, that consumer, just with the store and just with the e-commerce? No, you have to add the TikTok because this is what the, that young people are using hmm. to see the this content. This is where they are like today. Exactly. Now retailers have to adapt to the, re, the, the, the consumer and not mm -hmm. the opposite. The, yeah. the, the consumer, they said, okay, spoil me or else. That's, that's the thing. Yes, yes. And it's really interesting uh, uh, what you said uh, a bit earlier is that today we don't have time. I mean, lacking time would mean that at any moment, if we don't catch up the wave, uh, we might be out of the market because consumers are becoming less loyal and uh, they are less forgiving, I think. And um, they see that if the competition is providing things more easily or uh, we're, uh, giving more value through their experiences, I mean, why should they stay with you, right? That, that's right. If you have two similar products, they will go with the one who provide the best experience because, you know, in the way they're consuming for the last 10 years, they are not loyal. We are mm. talking about loyalty program and everything and everything. It's very hard. It costs a lot of money right. to to keep your customer loyal to your brand. But the experience is one of the key. So I'm not saying you you not use you, you should not using loyalty program. You you have to have everything. You have yes. no choice now to have yes. loyalty program yes. store pop up store. We have a, a, a customer and and it's very really dedicated to your books currently, uh, pop-up store. Yeah, we, we have um, uh, uh, Fédération Française de Tennis, which is the big um, a tournament, uh, Roland Garros, okay? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows Roland Garros. Uh, it's easy to, 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 to understand Five that. Yeah, <laughs> they have, of course, uh, the tournament, which is a sports event. That's great. They sell tickets to go and, and watch and see the, 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 the matches. Uh, in, in the other hand, they have a store to sell goodies, cap, T-shirt, um, um, everything about around the tennis, right? They have that store in the stadium. But what happened? They say that they find out that uh, a lot of people want to buy, but not going, not to be forced to go to the store, you know? To the stadium store. It, yeah. To the stadium store, exactly. So what did they decided for hopefully for 2021, if the COVID is not locking everybody down, and they will open pop-up store, a favorable store. And it's gonna spread that store everywhere in Paris. Why? Because mm -hmm. they know that tourists uh, who come for watching that tournament, seeing, uh, attend to that tournament, but they're also tourists. So in between two different matches, they can go to visit Eiffel Tower, they can go to buy uh, stuff in department store like Galerie Lafayette or whatever as tourists. Uh, what they are, they, I think they are smart uh, as a as a federation. They put they put several pop up store everywhere in Paris. So and they provide the services. So you, give you an example as a tourist. I'm I'm walking on the street. I'm going to Eiffel Tower and I see oh Roland Garros stuff. You know goodies cap and everything. I would be glad to buy that as a souvenir for my family when I go back to my country. But I don't want to carry that. So you can go in, time, in this kind of store, buy the stuff, and you let... it at the hotel. <laughs> exactly. Ship it to your hotel, and you get that, that, the stuff, and you can walk down the street and continue your tourist journey, you know? And that's, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. 
you have more touch point, but every touch point are linked to the same company, the same brand. Right. If I'm going to buy mm. a cup from Roland Garros, it's from Roland Garros brand. I really want that to go back to my family and give that as a gift. So it's going to be the same system connected to every kind of touch point, Instagram, live shopping, so social media, physical store, pop-up store, um, e-commerce store. That's, that's, that's right. what is unified commerce. Right. It's really beautiful. Come to think of it and how it blends uh, with the customer journey and uh, how it helps him, I mean, uh, continue doing his things without feeling that the brand is messing up his day or, you know, uh, making his day like heavier or <laughs> more condensed with the Sorry, Ralia. That he has this done. is not works cut. I, I didn't hear you. Sorry. I was saying that it's really nice to see how uh, brands are providing the solutions to make the customer journey so easy and to help them just continue their day without feeling that the brand or their shopping has become a burden, which mm. when we think about it is true because sometimes we want to shop. I mean, this is the first day of sales or Vente Privé and uh, the sun is out. It's a beautiful day. I want to buy everything, but I don't feel like carrying it around. I don't have the time to go back home and to continue my thing. And thinking about this, these little details which are making today the difference in retail, it's, it's something that all brand managers are invited to, to think about. Um, we talked earlier this uh, morning about uh, an interesting white paper that you wanted to share with us about, um, about the unified commerce. Yeah, Would that's you want right. To comment? <laughs> uh, yeah, it. sure. Uh, by the end of 2020, um, Proximis had decided to um, invite some expert retailers, um, consulting firm dedicated to retailer, and also with our experience to write a white paper to give more information about what is unified commerce, why you should do that, why are, what are the testimony of our customer as well. And other, uh, for example, uh, we invited Aldo Shoes. You know, Aldo Shoes um, is a big brand in Canada and they have store all around the world. And we invite them because they spend like four years and a million dollars of uh, uh, money to build unified commerce on in-house, you know. And, um, and it's very interesting. You were talking about providing a better experience. Like uh, if you go to the store, you don't want to carry all the bag back home and the, the, the idea and the concept of Aldo Shoes, for example, they say, I don't want warehouse anymore. All my store is going to be a small warehouse. So everything's going to be shipped from store. But to do so, you need to connect all inventory from any of your store around the world to your system to be able mm. to use your warehouse as a mini warehouse mm. for, uh, to ship from the store to your customer. And this is also what we're providing out of the box in our system. You know, yeah. instead of building that from scratch, you have yeah. something that 60 retailers are using already. So why not connecting uh, your system to our system to provide that services? This is, this is um, uh, how we can do that. And the why is also in the white paper. So uh, you're probably going to post the link for people to download that white paper. Yes, I'm going to be sharing the link on the story and in the comment uh, box uh, uh, just right after the live mm -hmm. uh, so people could go and download it. And it's a free uh, downloadable white paper, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. Daphne, I think we've covered like the important points about uh, unified commerce, its importance, uh, and um, why brands should use it. I mean, I think we could take uh, one more question. Uh, is this system region specific? Uh, I don't know if you're meaning about region or country or I don't know, Tavi, you could answer that. Yeah, um, our system was born in France, but of course we built that platform to be able to be used in different country. So currently we have some French customer who has some subsidiary outside of France in 34 countries using our platform. So yes, it's a worldwide um, SaaS platform. Yes, the country, yes. And especially now, and we're working also 
with uh, different third party uh, software to be able to uh, to be compliant with the tax, for example, in US, you know that you have like different tax, federal tax and and uh, and uh, and state uh, tax. Like Canada is, is the same uh, issue. So we have no issue, and that's also why. Thank you for your question. Um, in 2021, we started to expand Proximis outside of France, UK, mm. Spain, Belgium, Canada, uh, US, and Asia. Um, mm. We started in South Asia. So yeah, we our platform is really out of the box for many countries. So please tell me which country you're coming from, and we can I, we can I provide a solution. I think it's from Nigeria, if I'm allowed to say. <laughs> but uh, please feel free to contact Atavi. You have his Instagram account, or to visit. Uh, I think they can visit directly the the Proximis uh, website, right, for mm -hmm. information. Right, thank you. So I will be sharing that info uh, right after the live for you to uh, to be able to connect more easily. Thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> for all of these beautiful comments. Davi, uh, is there anything else that we need to add uh, to this uh, beautiful conversation? Yeah, I see it's in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And having stores, uh, stores in, the in UK. the UK. That's perfect. We perfect. also have a team in the in the UK. So yeah, if you want to have, especially local people, as you recognize my accent, uh, I was born in France, uh, rise in France, so I'm not English native. <laughs> Doing the live in English. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, yeah, Thank I would be more than happy to introduce you to the team. Just one more point, uh, which is important. We just published this morning, it's just a coincidence. Uh, we have done a study. Uh, you probably or maybe not know FEVAD. FEVAD is a, a federation in France about e-commerce and uh, distance selling. They have put a survey in uh, February the 4th. That survey showed that in 2020, the market uh, for retailers who have online and offline have increased about two, uh, 53%. You have to understand that our customer has increased about 232%. Okay. What does it mean? Is the, of course, the market was increased uh, uh, during the 2020. But our customer increase even more, five times more. What does it mean also? If you provide the right service to your consumer, you're gonna get more share market. Because if we are increasing a 232%, that also means that other were under 53% of, uh, of the average increase of sales in 2020. So if you want all that figure, we just uh, put a, a post on our blog. You are gonna have all the details of, what uh, are the figure, the key point, the KPI. Uh, if you want to have even more uh, details, please um, contact me. I would be more than happy to, to answer. Perfect. That is very interesting, Tavi. Thank you. And thank you for providing uh, all of us the opportunity to get access to, to this information. Thank you for inviting uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Tavi. It was really interesting. I have to always be keen on the watch with Instagram as sometimes we have to be doing the live in a our format. Um, I, I can't thank you enough for, for coming uh, over and for doing this chat. It was beautiful. Thank you for all of the information that you have provided. And I hope that we're going to be meeting with more uh, discussions on the topic soon. <laughs> and cheers for the hope of uh, the new world. <laughs> <laughs> cheers with my water. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tabi. Thank you. And have a nice evening. You too. Thank you, Thank everyone. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And I will be posting this uh, right now on IGTV. And uh, I will be sharing the YouTube link uh, very soon. Have a nice evening. Take care of yourselves. Bye. Stay safe. <laughs>